Welcome. On this lesson, we will be introducing the idea of a parallelogram. So what exactly is a parallelogram? A parallelogram, it's a four-sided figure where opposite sides are parallel to each other. So given this figure on the left-hand side, if we want to claim that this is a parallelogram, then we have to show that BC is parallel to AD, opposite sides are parallel, and AB is parallel to DC, opposite sides are parallel. So let's write this down in terms of sides, opposites are parallel. Now, there's another property that opposite sides share in common. If we have this scenario where opposite sides are parallel, then we have another property when it comes to sides. Opposite sides are also congruent to each other. Opposite sides are congruent. So if that's the case, then therefore BC is parallel to DC. So we can say that BC, I'm sorry, it's congruent to AD. And in addition, AB, it's also congruent to DC. So AB is also congruent to DC. Now let's take a look at the properties that we have when it comes to angles. So within a parallelogram, opposite angles are going to be congruent to each other. Opposite angles are congruent. And if that is the case, then therefore angle A is opposite to angle C. So we can claim that they are congruent to each other. And in addition, angle B it's opposite to angle D, therefore they are also congruent to each other. Now, there's another property when it comes to angles, and that is that adjacent angles are supplementary. So what are some examples in here? Well, angle A and angle D are on the same line. They are on the line AD. Therefore, they're adjacent. Therefore, they are supplementary. So let's write that down. If I get angle A and then I add angle D, that is going to be equivalent to 180 degrees. And the same goes with A. So angle A is also adjacent to angle B because notice that they both are on the line segment a, B. So the same idea applies. If I get angle A and I add angle B, that will also give me 180 degrees. And there's many of them. We're just not going to write all of them. But as long as they are on the same line segment, as long as they are adjacent, then we can claim that they're supplementary. Now let's take a look at the diagonals of this parallelogram. If we connect point A to point C, that is classified as a diagonal of this parallelogram. And the same goes if I connect point B to D. That's another diagonal. Notice that these diagonals, they intersect at a point. So let's call this point F. Now the property that diagonals have within a parallelogram is that diagonals, they bisect each other. So if that is the case, if diagonals bisect each other, then now that implies that this diagonal, the diagonal of AC, got split into two equivalent line segments. And those two equivalent line segments are AF and FC. The diagonal got split into half by the other diagonal. And the same can be said about the diagonal of BD. That diagonal of BD, it got bisected. Therefore, it got cut into two equivalent parts. And if it got cut into two equivalent parts, then we can claim that BF is congruent 
to FD. So what we have here are the different properties that we have when we are working with a parallelogram. Now, let's put these properties into practice and let's take a look at some examples. So now, what we want to do here is to use the properties of parallelograms to solve for the following, to solve for the unknowns. Now, the first thing that I acknowledge is that those unknowns are angles. So let's think about what properties do we have in terms of angles when we're working with parallelograms. And we discuss two different properties. We discuss the properties of opposite angles. Opposite angles are congruent. And we also have a second property, and that is that adjacent angles, adjacent angles are supplementary. So my strategy is here. I want to use these two properties to solve for the unknowns. So the first thing that I acknowledge is here. Angle A is opposite to angle C. Therefore, Y must have the same measurement as the opposite angle. And if we put those two ideas together, then now we know that Y is equivalent to 65 degrees. I also acknowledge the following. Angle Z, it's adjacent to 65. And if we use the second property, now we can say that if I get angle Z, and I add 65 to it, they must be supplementary. Therefore, it must be equivalent to 180 degrees. And here we can do very simple math. So let's take away 65. And now we have that 180 minus 65 is 115. So here we have that Z is equivalent to 115. So now we can put that down in here. So now I know that this angle right here is 1. 15. And there's only one value or one angle that we're missing, and that is angle X. But notice that if I get the angle of 115 and I add angle X, that's a straight line. Therefore, they're supplementary to each other. So we can set it up that way. I know that if I get 115 and I add angle X, that's equivalent to 180. We can take away 115. And now we have our final result. Now we know that X is equivalent to 65. So notice that the problem becomes more straightforward or easier to solve whenever we have a clear understanding about the property. So anytime that you're working with parallelograms, you want to think about what properties I can use. Let's take a look at another example. So here we have the same, another parallelogram. And let's start by acknowledging that we have a parallelogram. I, I even think I forgot to do that on the previous example. Um, so let's just annotate that AB is parallel to DC and AD is parallel to BC. Now let's think about different properties that we might have. Well, I know that opposite angles are congruent. So I can see that angle A is opposite to angle C. Therefore, X must have the same value as angle A. Therefore, X has a value of 56 degrees. Now, another thing that I do acknowledge within this example is that here we have a triangle on the right-hand side. And if this is a triangle, I know that the sum of the interior angles is equivalent to 180. Therefore, I can claim that this angle that we have here is going to be equivalent to 180 minus 85 minus angle X, which we know that is 56, which that is equivalent to 39 degrees. So why did I decide to identify this angle right here? Because also notice that in order for us to solve for angle Z, I need to know this angle. So now that I know 
what the value of this angle is, I can think of another property of parallelograms because I know that supplementary angles are those which are adjacent to each other. So now I can have a small equation right here. Now I can say that if I add 56 and I add angle Z, and then I add this angle that I just found out that should be equivalent to 180 degrees. Adjacent angles are supplementary. So here we can just do some quick math. Let me take away 56 over here. Let me take away 56 over here. Let me take away 39. Let me take away 39. So now I know that Z is equivalent to 180 minus 56 minus 39. So therefore, angle C it's equivalent to 85 degrees. So now that I know that Z has a value of 85 degrees, let's just put that in down here. Notice that now we can solve for angle Y. Because again, notice that here we have another triangle. And now that I know what is angle Z, then I can use the properties of the interior angles of a triangle, which I know that the sum is 180. So now I can have that 56 plus angle Z plus angle Y, that is 180. Well, let's plug in the knowns. We know that Z is a value of 85. So now if we take away 56 now on both sides, and we take away 85, on both sides as well. Now we have a value for y, which is equivalent to 39 degrees. So we have properly solved for angle y. We have solved for all the unknowns. We have finished up this question. But notice that here I use a combination of properties of triangles and properties of angles within a parallelogram. We can also could solve this problem in a different way. So let's take a second perspective within the same problem. So same problem, same task. So I can still use this idea of opposite angles being congruent to each other. So here we have that angle A is opposite to angle X. So I can see that X is equivalent to 56 degrees. Now, don't forget that we have parallel lines. So if we have parallel lines, then I know that this, this side is parallel to this side, and this side, actually let me do them in green. So we have that this side is parallel to this side, and this side is parallel to this side. Another perspective that we could have taken is to extend the lines. Now, what would happen if we extend the lines of BC? So let's say we extend this line. I mean, don't forget that that line is parallel to this line here. And if that's the case, then we can think of this line that we have here, this diagonal, as being a transversal. And if that line is a transversal, then notice that angle of 85, it's an alternate interior angle to angle Z. That was a faster way to identify what's the value of Z. Now we can see that Z is equivalent to 85. And now that we know that Z is equivalent to 85, that makes it easier now, because now we can think of this as being a triangle and we can use the properties of the interior angles of a triangle. So now I know that if I get 56 and I add angle Z and I add angle Y, that is equivalent to 180, but we know what Z is. Z is 50, I'm sorry, Z is 85. So plus Y equals 180. And now let's take away those values. So let's take away 56 on both sides. And let's take away 85 from both sides. 
So therefore y is equivalent to 39 degrees. So now we have two ways to think about this type of parallelogram problems. We can use the properties that we have for parallelograms, but do not forget that you're working with parallel lines. So you can still work or you can still use the properties of parallel lines. Hello, if you would like to continue to learn about mathematics, you can check out the videos on the left. Thank you.